Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Jessica with Syosset Libraries Turn the Page podcast. And this is a really exciting uh, interview to be doing because uh, this author's book, um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, is breathtaking. And we are just so excited to have her here. So actually, I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell us about her book. Thank you so much, Jessica. I am so excited to be here. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm Suwin Tan, and I'm the author of God of the Moon Goddess, which is my debut fantasy, out with Harper Voyager on January 11th. So God of the Moon Goddess is a fantasy inspired by the legend of Chang'e, the Chinese moon goddess. It is a beloved legend of the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is celebrated by Chinese people around the world. Um, it is a story of immortals, magic, adventure, romance, rich in Chinese mythology. There are dragons. <laughs> and But it is centered around a young woman's quest to free her mother, which sets her on a dangerous path and pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. But at its heart, it is really a story about love, both, you know, family and romantic, and for me in, in all, it's both wondrous and devastating manifestations. So the story starts with a, a young woman named Xinyin, who discovers that she's being hidden from the powerful celestial emperor who imprisoned her mother on the moon. And um, her magic flares, she's discovered and she's forced to flee her home and ends up in the celestial kingdom, which is where she probably should not be. <laughs> So um, there she disguises her identity and, you know, she seizes an opportunity to train with the crown prince of the realm, who is also the emperor's son, and she learns archery and magic, and some of this talent is in her blood as well. Um, it is a fantasy romance, so, you know, there we have forbidden love, we have friends to lovers to enemies, may not be quite it there, and, but through it all, her main goal remains to save her mother, and she embarks on a quest to do that, where she faces, you know, monsters and fearsome and wicked enemies, and until a new danger threatens the kingdom, and where she faces, you know, a very difficult choice, basically, where she risks losing everything or plunging the realm into chaos. So, in a nutshell, that is roughly the story. Well, not, not quite the whole story. <laughs> oh, no. And what I love about the story is the familial love. I mean, her dedication to freeing her mother. I think, you know, I, I like the idea that, I mean, she knows in the very beginning that um, her mother is revered by mortals and that, you know, they make mooncakes in her honor and um, her mother's the moon goddess. I mean, who would imagine mm -hmm. that the moon goddess would be, uh, you know, under um, anybody's control, but the fact that it's like a curse is a really interesting way of um, looking at it. And um, I also just loved how fiercely independent she was. Mm. No, I mean, absolutely. I think that was an, an important part of me in the book that I wanted her to really be, you know, the one driving her own fate and her own destiny. And it was really interesting what you said as well about the moon goddess on the moon being a curse. I mean, in the in the original mythology, should, uh, it, we could talk a little bit about that right now. Yes, I would actually, I would yeah. actually love to. Um, yeah, because because yeah. the original mythology is like a beautiful tapestry behind um, Shingen's mm -hmm. story. So uh I was actually hoping that you that uh, we would be able to delve into this sooner or later. So let's do so. Uh, yeah, it was actually your, your question that got me thinking about it. I was thinking, how do I answer this without going into the original mythology? So, I mean, just to give a brief, re brief recap on the story. So it is um, a mid-autumn legend that is much beloved. It is often told during the annual mid-autumn festival, which fall, is always held on the night of, you know, full moon. 
So according to the story, um, once upon a time, there were 10 suns that rose in the sky and it caused great devastation everywhere. You know, people could not eat, the rivers dried up. And, um, and an archer, the, the greatest archer in the realm named Ho Yi was tasked to shoot the suns. And he took up his bow and shot nine out of 10 of the suns, leaving just one to light the earth. And he was gifted the elixir of immortality, which would you know, give him immortal life and transform him into a god. But he did not take it because he didn't want to leave his wife whom he loved very much. Yet it was Chang'e who took it instead, flying to the moon, where it was said that in some variations that she was imprisoned by the emperor of heaven, exiled to the moon for her theft of the elixir. And um, so, I mean, the first line of Dora the Moon Goddess is there are many legends about my mother. And, you know, there are so many variations as to why Chang'e did this. Some said that she was literally saving the elixir from thieves who broke into the house and she drank it by accident. Some said that, you know, Ho Yi became an evil tyrant and Chang'e drank it because she didn't want the people to suffer, you know, eternally underneath him. And, you know, um, some said that she just wanted to become a goddess. And for myself, though, I felt that all those reasons felt a little bit, a little bit, well, they left me a little hollow inside and I just imagined, you know, what if there was more, what if there was somebody that she was protecting or, or you know, trying to save who she loved as much as her husband, because the one thing that I firmly believed was that they, that they both loved each other. And then so I, the thought just came into my head, like, what if there was, you know, a child, a daughter, and I thought what an incredibly fascinating yet burdensome heritage that would be, you know, and she would fight for her mother's freedom, being exalted to the moon as fiercely as a father did for the world. And that was, you know, how the story came about. So, um, I mean, the core legend in the story kind of stays quite close to the original because, you know, it's somewhat, it's a legend that means a lot to me. And uh, I did take my own interpretation of her being exalted to the moon to, the, to her being actually, you know, an enchantment put on her where she cannot leave as well, which is what Sing Yin sets out to free her mother from. So, <laughs> so the first time this, legend in fall um sort of came on my radar was i can't you know during Netflix. COVID, you can't even remember what ha like what oh. what year when it began but um i believe it might have been i mean i was i was aware of just very nominally you know like the moon festival and that there was a moon goddess and um mm -hmm. you know um but the the legend, as you said it, uh, there was a movie called Over the Moon. It was an animated mm -hmm. movie and it. it was really beautiful and it made my whole family cry. And I think uh -uh. The, um, the idea behind it was that um, a, a young woman, a young woman, man, she was a kid. She mm -hmm. loses her mother and uh, her family's tradition was to build to bake to make mooncakes together and um you know she her mother passes away uh and the father is possibly going to remarry and she decides she's going to go to the moon and she's going to get um Chang uh is am I is my pronunciation okay <laughs> it, it, well yeah, it's, it's a difficult one quite honestly <laughs> um, I mean I pronounce it as Chang uh Chang uh, okay. Uh, Chang uh, Chang uh, to grant her wish to bring her mother back, and you know her her soon to be little stepbrother tags along, and it is like first of all the animation was beautiful, but like the story mm -hmm. itself was just so lovely. Uh, so that was you know one of the things immediately um, that when the book came up and I was like oh you know this is this is great this is um this is more of the mythology uh, that I was learning in over the moon and I love takes on mythology I mean that's sort of um that's sort of my tonic when it comes to fantasy books mm -hmm. I absolutely love it when authors sort of have their decide okay I'm going to take this myth that means a lot to me and I am going to sort of flesh it out and play in that world a little bit uh, because right. it's very mm -hmm. much mine and I'm going to bring that part out in my writing. Yes, that, that's something I, I really enjoy as well. I mean, I, I did I really liked Over the Moon as well. I thought it was such a creative and beautiful interpretation of the legend. And, you know, I mean, for me, like the legend of China is one that I've loved since I was a child. <laughs> I still remember the first time I saw China's image on a mooncake box. I mean, uh, I, 
I grew up in Malaysia and now I live in Hong Kong, but you know, it, it's a really big thing over here. And so when I saw a picture of her in her beautiful garments flying on the clouds to the moon, I think it was just something that just captured my imagination. And it was just a story that always like lingered on in my head. And during the mid autumn festival, it's actually pretty, um, it's pretty amazing. Like you can see the images of her on the lanterns around. Um, my, my son in kindergarten was actually taught songs about her flying to the moon. <laughs> So it's, it's, uh, it's really a legend that means a lot to me. And that was, you know, something that I was a, a little afraid to tackle in the beginning. But, you know, I, I think that it's something that's so precious to me. I'm just so excited to share it with more people. So tell us a little bit about um, Xinying and how she sort of came about. Are there any interpretations of the myth where um, Chaga has a daughter? No, not, none that I read. <laughs> And there are quite a few out there. And it was it was really because, um, you know, I was, I was speaking a little bit about this earlier that, you know, all the, the reasons I left the red all left me feeling a bit hollow because, you know, they were in love. And, and I thought that it would have to be a really powerful reason for her to do what she did. And I just imagined a child from there. And I think the funny thing is this, right? That the first thing that came to me of the story was, I mean, was the idea. And then the title came, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And the first line that I typed is, there are many legends about my mother. And the title and the first line are the just the two things that have not changed through the numerous rounds of edits. It is um, an idea that, you know, I just conceptualized and just took it from there. You know, imagining her story tied still to the legend of the moon goddess, but saving her mother, but a completely independent and, you know, a different take on the story but still incorporating a lot of the key themes of the Mid Autumn Festival, which really revolves around family, love, and reunion. So yeah, that, that is how it came about. <laughs> yeah, and the love story in it, so there is the family love, but then there's also, there's some um, romantic love as well. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. through it all though, I mean, Xing Ying is just, she's just so, focused on you know she doesn't seem to fall into the trap that a lot of um heroes in these stories fall into where they're just going to sort of turn to mush for whom they love <laughs> um and I like that about her but I don't want to give any spoilers away. I'm like so close I'm like We're, I have a thing that is in my mind but I really just want people to read this book um yeah I I really just like the the way the um celestials and the immortals and their world is just so beautifully uh put together and I, I love that she is drawn to archery, which is no spoiler to say her father <laughs> Alan. Uh, that was that was pretty great. Uh, where did you decide to sort of um, veer off to show bits of her father within her? Well, I think, you know, I mean, Hoi is as important a part of the legend as Chang'e to me. So, you know, there are two, two, two parts of the story. And I thought that, you know, even though it's Star of the Moon Goddess, I thought I really wanted to bring in elements of Hoi as well. And for me, archer, archery is really, you know, a really big thing. And it was something that I really wanted to be her core strength in as well, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I yeah. thought that that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, so... Uh, a little bit more just about the world of the um the immortals when... yeah, I, I had a lot of fun writing that part <laughs> well, tell us about it <laughs> well you know um when well when i was a child i loved like fairy tales you know chinese fantasy dramas you know i used to watch a lot of them with my mother and the world was just so beautiful you would have the falling peach blossom petals you would have the exquisite scenery of mountains and rivers and these mysterious islands with like you know purple trees and flowers and everything and you'd have the the garments oh i love the clothes last time right the long sewing robes with all their different like tassels and ornaments and everything and and music is a really big part of it as well, as well as the food. And for me, like the stories I, I really liked as well were the ones with the world that I wished were real, that I, you know, I wished I could escape in and, you know, like live there and meet everyone there. <laughs> so 
I guess that was kind of, you know, what I was, what I was hoping to, to achieve when I crafted this world. Like I really wanted a, a beautiful, sweeping world, but I also wanted to um, show a different side to it as well that, you know, that, that that beneath this layer of perfection and beauty, there is also danger and treachery and, you know, darkness, which can lurk there because, and it is so much more unexpected when you have this like, you know, glittering, beautiful facade on the outside. So yeah, I, I did enjoy writing some of those descriptions. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Yeah. I wanted to go there. Oh, I'm so happy to hear you say that. <laughs> and another thing that I love, and I'm just sort of flipping through the pages to kind of uh, pick pick up you know just my thoughts um each chapter has this just beautiful like illustration with the number of you know the moon and the clouds oh. and it's just it's so pretty that it just adds this quiet layer to the story as you turn the page so you're you're reading this beautiful um description and a lot of it is very exciting there are battles in it um <laughs> and as you mentioned monsters and uh romance um but then you turn you know you finish a chapter and then you see this beautiful <laughs> drawing and you're just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well I didn't draw it <laughs> But did you did you have any input in that? Is my question. I was very fortunate. I mean, throughout the editorial process, I was very fortunate that you know it was a very collaborative process as well, and um, I was able to share some thoughts and ideas. And what's interesting as well is that the clouds are actually more like like Asian Chinese style clouds. They're like swirling and curls and everything, right? So yeah, yeah. I really like that part too. From what I understand, this is, is this book a duology? Yes, it is. Um, so it's, um, it's interesting because right now I'm actually working on the second book. <laughs> um, I'm At, wait a editing. second, as, as we speak, you are. <laughs> I know. Wow. <laughs> it's been a little bit busy. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm editing it right now. The second book is actually due to come out in fall 2022, so in the same year as well. And um, it, I'm really excited for it. I wrote the first book uh, so that it could stand alone, but you know, I there was so much more I wanted to tell about Singin's journey. You know, about the world we haven't explored all of it yet, and there are all these. There were some unresolved questions and um, situations. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Yes, there. Yes, there. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing. There's like, there's, as I said before, there's so many things I want to just blurt out. But I was just like, oh my gosh, if I do that, it's going to give away too much of the story. And I just, uh, I, I don't want anybody to come into this already expecting some of the things that are going to happen because. I feel like you just need to experience them. <laughs> I have a big sign like around here saying, no spoilers, please, <laughs> especially because I'm working on book two right now. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm just really excited for, I mean, I love the title. Hopefully we can share that soon. <laughs> and I'm really excited for where the story is going as well. So I, I, I can't wait to share it, <laughs> but it's definitely been a busy few months. So what are some books that you have been reading? Uh, do, you genu do you generally read fantasy or um, do you have like a secret love for like, I don't know, murder mysteries? <laughs> <laughs> well, right now I'm reading nothing. <laughs> Sadly, no, no. But um, usually when I have time, um, I love reading fantasy first and foremost, you know, I, I mean, but I also like reading romance as well. And so when you've got the mix of both fantasy romance, I'm in my happy place. <laughs> um, I, I love both by uh, Stephanie Garber is wonderful. You know, her world. And, right. and she blurbed you. She blurbed you. I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at the front of the book, a breathtaking debut novel. That must be pretty great being blurbed by one of your favorites. I know it was pretty crazy. I mean, I didn't. I, I didn't know her before. She is truly, not only is she a wonderful author, she is truly a very kind and generous and supportive person. Honestly, she's 
uh, <laughs> I can't say enough good things about her. <laughs> but I love, I love her writing as well. You know, the imagination, the, the romance, the magic, and the beautiful world. Um, I really liked the, the Bone Shark Daughter by Andrea Stewart. I mean, and she's got a sequel coming up soon, so that should be really exciting. She has such an interesting take on on magic and characters, and um, I really love. I don't know if you read it, but there's a really cute um, side character called Miffy there, which I really like as well. It's now on my list. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, but honestly, there have been so many amazing books that I've read this year. Uh, I could go on for a really long time. I mean, She Who Became the Sun, I think, is really wonderful. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, you like it too? Uh, seriously, when I read it, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly, don't read my book. <laughs> I just, you know, there's, there's one thing about just this whole time period. I think a lot of people have been, and there's there's a lot of uh, talk about just the resurgence of like independent bookstores. And I don't think I have ever read as much in the last 18 months as I ever have. And that includes when, you know, because when we shut down um, during the early days of COVID, I was still working. And that's kind of something that I think a lot of people find interesting. Like the library, we, we were saying the library, the building is closed, but the library is open. And, you know, like we were always, okay, how do we, how do we still work from home but provide services to people like what exactly mm -hmm. is you know what what are we doing so there was a lot of like let's get back to basics and read and find a way to go from there and I just exploded and my colleagues as well with the amount of things we started reading so you know it's like as much like putting things on my list as being like oh yeah I remember reading that yeah I read that too <laughs> wow that must be a pretty busy but you know what I mean, reading is a happy place for me, so that that's definitely a, I think, a good thing to have, right? <laughs> did you now? Did you start re, uh, writing Daughter of the Moon Goddess um, in like during the pandemic? No, um, Daughter of the Moon got well. You know, publishing has a really long timeline, <laughs> so um, I wrote Daughter of the Moon Goddess actually uh, before the pandemic, and um, I think it sold at the end of. Hmm, you're right about time getting away from you. But anyway, I wrote it before the pandemic. <laughs> and it, I think it's, uh, the announcement came out in uh, 2020, early 2020. So yeah, it takes, it takes quite a while to get here. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I hope that you'd consider talking to us when the sequel comes out. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'd love to. <laughs> if you have me, if you have me back. <laughs> of course. Yeah, no, absolutely. Of course. I, I think this is going to be a huge hit. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, the first the first time I came upon just the the fall or at least one full version of um, the myth of the moon goddess and Hoi and uh, Chang'e was over the moon, which was it's animated. It's quote unquote, a kid's movie. It is for everybody it is not <laughs> it, it will make you cry it'll make you laugh um and it's um it's really great but I think um this one is going to be very well received and I think that everybody is going to fall in love um everybody's going to fall in love with Shinging and want to hear more of her story and uh you know stay in that world a little bit more Oh, I'm so excited to hear that. I mean, because when, when you write, I guess you, you never know. You just how it's, how it's going to be received. But you know what? I'm so happy to hear that you like the story. It really means so much to me. And so excited to be here as well. <laughs> Thank you. So once yeah. again, this was Jessica with Turn the Page podcast. Our guest today was... Suman Tan, author of Daughter of the Moon Goddess, out with Harper Voyager, January 11th. And upcoming to be named or to be to be named to be revealed yes. sequel to the daughter <laughs> of the moon goddess. Very, very soon coming to you. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. And we are going to close this chapter. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.